Hello YouTube. Once again we're gonna take a look at the PowerMac G4 MDD and uh, Serial ATA but in a little bit different way than in the previous video about this machine. And I'll show you by opening up the machine. There we are. As we can see here in the section with the uh, expansion cards we have the USB card still, the SATA card and the Radio 9000 Pro graphics. Two one gigabyte sticks of DDR RAM there, and over there in the uh, drive cage underneath the uh, uh, optical drive assembly, uh, there is the there WD Raptor 10K uh, SATA hard drive. On the right hand side of the machine, we can see a SanDisk SSD. Right there. It's not connected to SATA though; it's just connected to the IDE bus directly. There used to be a hard drive there which I in fact have somewhere. Uh, yeah, can get to it now. But there's usually a hard drive cage there and you can uh, put two hard drives in there and uh, run them off the uh, IDE channel there. But I connected a SSD to it for a uh, good reason. Because as it turns out uh, you can't really use SATA SSDs to these SATA 1 controllers because they're not that compatible with SATA 3 drives. A regular hard drive will be fine but it says these are a little bit of a different story. And, uh, you know, in the real world it doesn't really matter that much because SATA 1 and uh, the speed the PCI bus can provide is pretty close to one another. A 33 MHz PCI bus can do about 133 MHz, or uh, megabytes per second. And uh, a SATA 1 controller can do 150 megabytes per second. So, uh, yeah. So without further ado, uh, let's take out the SATA card and uh, show you the real magic performance of these SSDs connected to a uh, IDE controller directly. Alright, let's power it on. There's the bong. And the uh, obviously uh, very loud PowerMac G4 MDD. Now you might wonder, why did I actually take out the card? Well, it's very simple. Once you boot the Mac, it's going to search for bootable devices on this card. So it will take a while before it actually starts booting up and before you actually get the uh, spinny wheel there. But this is the speed you can expect from running a PowerPC G4 on an IDE SSD. That was OS X Tiger booting up in, like, as soon as we got an image, five seconds. It's just, it's insane. I'll actually be doing a measured run later on in the video where I'll actually put the uh, SSD head to head to the 10k RPM SATA drive when booting a fully stocked OS X Leopard. But uh, first I just want to, sh want to show you how fast this machine is. So let's do that again. Just for uh, the sake of showing the insanity of SSDs in PowerPC Max. It really make a difference. You know, there's also a little bit of a sad thing here because uh, iMac G5s and PowerMac G5s are really picky when it comes to SATA SSDs. And the thing is, if you just connected an SSD like this to the optical drive uh, connection there, because they're always IDE on those machines, uh, well, not the iMac G5, but the PowerMac G5 certainly, uh, <laughs> you could actually get faster results than connecting something to the native hard drive bus on those things. It's sad. It's a sad, sad situation. As Elton John would put it. So let's also show you Mac OS 9. That's an operating system that I've always found to boot very, very slowly. And I guess that's just down to the way it was designed. You know, a stand boots a lot quicker in comparison. I mean, this machine is way overkill for OS 9, but it didn't boot all that quick. So now we'll see how fast that boots. There's the image. There's the Happy Mac. You know, you're usually looking at about 30 second boot up from as soon as you get the macOS 9 screen. 
But this is way quicker. And we're fully booted now that the control strip has showed up. Alright. So yeah. G4 MDD with 2 gigs of RAM and a bloody SSD. And it's really fast. So yeah, I guess that really proves that point. So uh, for the next section of this video I'm going to clone the contents of the uh, WD Raptor drive to the uh, to the SSD and uh, then we're going to do a uh, boot up and overall speed test between the two uh, operating systems and drives. So we're going to make an exact copy of that OS X Leopard that's on that uh, Raptor drive so we can make it as fair as possible because a clean install will always perform a lot better than one that has been uh, destroyed basically in terms of performance by adding a lot of software and startup programs and all that jazz. So that's what I'm going to do next, and uh, it's going to take a while, so be happy that you don't have to go through that process. As you can see here, the cloning process is very much underway. I just uh, started about uh, 30 seconds ago, and as you can see it's going pretty quickly. So we're about we're copying the Leopard uh, partition to the uh, SSD now. I think it's about 20 gigs total of data that's actually on there, so it's not that much. And uh, apparently it's going to be finished in about two minutes. So yeah, that's pretty speedy. <laughs> right, we'll be right back after this finishes. And uh, yeah, I'll actually see if it even boots with uh, this clone in place. Alright, the cloning process is done, so now we can boot the machine up from the uh, internal hard drive. And uh, yeah, so there is a little something something that I need to uh, talk about real quick, and that is the fact that once you start booting from the SATA card, it actually sits there for a little bit. So before it actually starts loading, uh, you just have to wait for a little bit. It's about 10-15 seconds or so, and then it starts loading. Uh, it doesn't do that when you boot from the directly attached drives, like IDE hard drives, or in this case our IDE to SATA SSD. So, uh, to make this a properly a fair comparison, I will have a uh, little uh, phone here that uh, I can use for this as a stopwatch, and uh, we'll press the start button as soon as the little cartwheel uh, appears, and uh, we'll measure from that point onwards. Of course, it always uh, takes about 10-15 seconds from the boot up sound. Uh, on the Mac before it actually shows an image. That's typical for these PowerPC Macs to go through their uh, open firmware interface test. I'm waiting for it. Yeah, there we go. Cartwheel has begun. So this is OS X Leopard 10.5.8 with all updates installed. And it booted up in about 16 seconds. Alright. We'll do one more run because I wasn't paying close enough attention. And because of uh, <coughs> scientific reasons. Well, the shutdown is taking its sweet time. There we go. Waiting for that image. And again, got it handy here.
Yep, that's about 15 seconds. Before everything was loaded, it's, well, let's just call it 14 and a half. All right. So that's a pretty nice figure already. So we got that baseline now. Where did I put the phone? There we go. Let's put it out of there. So let's try Microsoft Word. That's pretty zippy. Let's try opening up 104 Fox. Wow, that took like way over 10 seconds. That's that's not that great. There we are. I mean, that's obviously where an SSD will absolutely shine in excess times like that. But uh, yeah, now it's just beach balling on us to close 104 Fox. But uh, yeah. DLC, see how quickly that opens. That's not too bad. And of course, Safari. It's a lot faster for sure than uh, than Ten Four Fox. Let's look at the website here. Accept the cookies. Got to keep in mind, this is just a uh, one gigahertz dual uh, G4, and this website is full of ads. So you know, it's not exactly smooth, but it is most definitely usable, especially once you get to the forum section here. It's definitely a lot better. Let's take a look at iTunes here. Isn't that a sight to behold? iTunes 10.6.3 from 2012. You know, that's actually pretty good that uh, PowerPC Max were actually supported through 2012 in terms of iTunes support. Okay, so I guess that's our baseline that we're going to have to work with. Uh, there's a, oh, by the way, there's one more thing that I do want to try. No pun intended there. Uh, let's open up a really large application. Let's go for... Uh, Christ. I'm not going to go for Christ, but Photoshop CS2. It always takes a good while to start on a machine like this. There we go. Beach balling away nicely. And loaded. Not quite loaded. Okay, fine. Okay, thank you. There we go. Right. See, especially when closing programs is not all that quick. Okay, so let's see how Leopard actually does once we switch over to an SSD. Because that's going to be interesting for sure. So I'm going to pull the SATA card and uh, disconnect the hard drive and uh, boot from the SSD next. Alright, the card is out. Let's put her back up. I didn't set it as the uh, boot device, so this might actually uh, get interesting when it tries to look for the drive that's no longer there. <clears throat> yeah. Okay, there's the video.
there we go, 12 seconds. So that's about three seconds off the boot time, not counting for not accounting for the uh, delay in actual response to the SATA card. That's pretty good. So let's try 104 Fox now. That's about the same. That's just a really bloated application, it would seem. Try Safari. Yep, that's definitely a bit quicker. Let's see if it also responds quicker to input for uh, websites. Not really. It's about the same. The CPU is probably working over time. VLC feels just a tiny bit quicker to me. Still iTunes. It's pretty good. About five seconds to open. Word is about the same. Let's go with the Photoshop again. It's a bit quicker. Let's say about two, three seconds uh, faster load time. That's pretty good. So, you know, overall, not bad, but uh, it's definitely the biggest speed difference you really perceive is when it boots up because you just you're not sitting there waiting for the drive to start doing something, and that's that's really uh, the main difference here. And uh, I think this is actually going to be the best solution to get a PowerPC Mac or any vintage computer for that matter. Uh, to get it to go faster and be more reliable in the end because quite frankly IDE hard drives are getting harder and harder to find uh, most of them are just really heavily used drives already with like 20 30,000 hours and maybe maybe they don't have reallocated sectors yet but they will have soon typically I mean they're just you know the reliability is just not there anymore and uh, unless you really want to pay to get specifically an IDE hard drive to be irrecorrect then yes you're gonna have to do that but it's a much nicer solution to just go online, get a SATA SSD, like from even from frickin' China, like 64 gig SSD for, I don't know, like 18, 19, 20 bucks. You can even get like uh, 128 gig SSDs from name brands like Crucial and Kingston for like 30 bucks. You get 120 gigs. It's not all that uncommon anymore. And you get these adapters for like five to ten bucks off, off uh, of uh, eBay or AliExpress or wherever and that's just you know much cheaper than having to buy or have like have to pay 50 60 bucks for a 40 gig IDE hard drive that's not even new in box just because someone just because it has little hours or whatever and even if you want a new in box one it's gonna be like 100 bucks for 80 gig drive you know you're, you're, pre you're pretty much insane if you want to pay that much, just to be irrecorrect. Just get a 120 gig SSD, 30 bucks, adapter, 10 bucks, no, 40 bucks, you're done. You got a system that's even quicker than with that hard drive installed. It's more quiet. It's also a very nice addition. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> the quietness just doesn't apply to a Power Mac G4, though. These machines are loud as heck. So, that's just something that uh, you can't get around. Anyways, that'll be it for this video. I hope you enjoyed this uh, take on the IDE SSD, or well, say that's IDE SSD solution for a uh, vintage Power Mac. And uh, maybe I'll try the same on a computer running Windows 2000 or Windows 98, so we can take a look at how that performs and differs from a regular hard drive. Uh, let me know in the comment section if you want to see that. I will put some effort into making that if you want to and want me to. And uh, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll take it from there. 
Hope you enjoyed the video, and thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.